Beavers one late turnover away from a monumental upset of Stanford last week. How will they bounce back in the Bay as they face a Cal team exceeding expectations? And is Corey Hall doing enough to win the Oregon State opening? The players think so. We'll discuss the latest on the coaching carousel and much more on a brand new edition of Talking Beavers. Beavers turn their attention to the other Northern California school as Oregon State set to play Cal on Saturday afternoon. We're setting the stage here in our haunted studios at NBC Sports <laughs> Northwest. Uh, welcome in to a very Halloween edition of Talking Beavers. And we actually have a special guest, Coach Hall, joining <laughs> us over there. Well, so now, now play, we gotta go out and work real hard today now. Evan, Evan Super Bernard, he's gonna give us a fiery pep talk, I'm sure, later. He Captain better. Hook That's is That's right, because if he's not good, I'm gonna take him, I'm gonna hook him off and make sure yeah. he's not that good. And then, are they running out of time? Is, is Coach Hall running out of time? In this wow, Amanda, good job. <laughs> that was cool. I've been working on these all week. Uh, well, guys, again, welcome into Talking Beavers. Plenty of positives to get to in this show, including the play of the defense. Also, we're going to talk about Coach Hall's potential at Oregon State, whether or not he's done enough to win this head coaching job. But first, of course, the coaching staff never cares about moral victories. But I have to say, there, there probably was quite a few you could take from Stanford. What were your takeaways in that one? Well, the defense, yeah. for me. I mean, just being a defensive guy myself, I mean, the way that the defense played, the passion that they played with, <coughs> how they played, uh, and overall, I mean, uh, secondary, the defensive line, the linebackers, everybody was flying around, making plays, obviously, without having Bryce Love, it was a little bit easier for them to make mm -hmm. those plays, but they played phenomenal. I was really impressed with them. Yeah, and I think they knew the challenge was going to, you know, Stanford was going to come out and try to beat them up up front. Right. And I think they responded very well, and we saw that, and obviously, you know, unfortunately came down to the wire and we couldn't pull it off, but I think the guys played a great game. I mean, what stinks is that they should have won. Yeah. That's kind of the bottom line, you know. And Corey Hall said Monday at his press conference that it's, you can't just blame Ryan Nall, you know. And I, and I agree with that. You know, how they dropped like four picks. Yeah, it's okay. insane that Keller mm -hmm. Chris was not, did not throw a couple more interceptions. But I, huge. I just continue, you know, we said like, okay, well, Colorado game's kind of weird. You know, it's such an emotional week. But clearly, like, they came ready to play. Yeah. And certainly a lot of that having to do with Coach Hall and his energy, how, what he's been able to bring to the table. There's actually been an online petition going around this week brought forth by Beavers players to keep Corey Hall in as head coach of the program. Here was his response this week when he heard about it. When, when I found out about it, it was, I felt, I felt good. And I didn't feel good for myself. I didn't feel good for the staff. And I just felt good because I know how that feels to know that you're 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 worth something as a player and as an athlete and that you feel you feel like you found your you you found what you thought wasn't there right over the course of the past three years and um, I understand and I connect more with that feeling more so than for for me and, and my future here. I connect with the feeling that these players have embraced the fact that they are winners and they know that they can win. They went and battled the number 20th ranked team in the country that has this physical brand of football and they went toe to toe with them and they looked at each other and they they believe now. It's not started to believe. Now they believe. They are, they're fully invested and um, that's that's what makes me feel good. And when I heard about the petition, um, again, it's, it's about them, right? They're, they're not petitioning for me. That's, that's them. And they need to maintain that focus and understand they're a team. And they're way better than a lot of people gave them credit for. And this petition actually gained a thousand signatures in one day. Uh, all the players have been tweeting about it with the hashtag Hall In. Uh, and here's what some of them had to say Isaiah Hodgins saying that these are the times that you find out really who. Sorry, I must have totally misread that. These, these are the times you find out who really with you. 100. Hall In. My 30 year old self trying to read these tweets is great. Uh, no one can lead us better than. 
Coach Hall, I promise he's going to get us where we need to go. Hall in. And I'm with this Hall in movement from Trayvon Bradford. How surprised are you guys at the outpouring of support publicly? Well, also. Here, okay, I, it's great that there are a thousand signatures, <clears throat> but Research Stadium holds 45,000 people roughly, so it's so it's not actually that many people. Um, I don't think that Hall has a realistic shot at the job. I mean, if they win a couple games, then probably we're going to have to have a conversation about that. But the the I don't think he is. But I, I don't think that's the point. Yeah. To me, the point is this. This is someone that came in, you know, in this very bizarre situation. He's only been a college coach for three years. And look what he's doing. Like, he is impacting these kids' lives in such a positive way. Regardless of what's next for Hall and for Oregon State, these kids are going to be forever grateful to him, especially the kids who had already gone through this once when Mike Riley left. And again, and we, we said this a couple weeks ago, I just think it's so important and it's awesome that there is an African-American man at Oregon State a school that is, you know, very, very white and very conservative, yeah. that he is an example, not just for his kids, but, you know, he has three boys. He has three little boys himself. And especially right now when racial tension is really high in our country, I think it's really important that we see people in minorities and, and women and people of color in those positions. Yeah, and I, I couldn't agree with you more. I mean, like, he's been so impressive. You know, I've been, I mean, keep in mind that here's someone who's never been an assistant head coach. Like, uh, you know, Lindsay said, he's only been a coach for three years. And what makes him great for this program and for these kids is that he's relatable. Yes. You know, I mean, he could relate to these kids. He knows where they uh, where they come from. He he himself mentioned that, you know, he came from a, a urban yeah. you know, neighborhood, a urban background, a single parent background, which a lot of these kids have come from. And, and he's relatable. And, and these kids are buying into who he is as a man, as a coach, and as someone that they could follow and, and, and um, be able to lead them to where they want to be. I mean, one of the things that he said that I, I loved, and this was probably one of, my, one of the best parts of his uh um, in his talk and his comments was that he said that these kids believe in themselves. It's not about me. It's about them believing in, in, in themselves and being and knowing that they could be winners. You know, and and something that didn't happen. Interpreted years. as a little bit of a shot at Gary Anderson. You know, he yeah. said this is the first time these kids have believed in themselves in three years. Yeah, yeah. I think uh, you know, Lindsey says he doesn't have a shot. I think he might have a shot. I think at the end of the day, these players, if if they're all, if if they all want him to be the guy, you have to, as the AD and the, the president of Oregon State University, you have to look at like, okay, like we might have to give these kids what they want because these they're, they're playing they're playing motivational football right now, they, which they haven't done in a while. Yeah, they haven't done that in a long time. Time. And Beaver Nation, now I'm getting texts like, hey, Ev, what do you think about keeping Coach Hall around? I think he might be. And so it's, the word's getting out there. And I'm sure, you know, people are looking at like, hey, you know, maybe it is the right move to make. So uh, You see, the funny thing is that, like, you know, he might not be kept as the head coach, right? but he absolutely... Oh, no way. Oh, no yeah, way. Yeah, yeah. No, I'm gonna tell, that's not going to happen here. What? Here's why. I'll, I'll bet you guys money. He is not, which I should have bet you last week that Bryce was. <laughs> there's no way that they can keep him because they bring in a new head coach, and then some kids don't like that head coach, and then suddenly they're in Hall's office. Oh, Coach Hall was so much better when you were involved, and then that chatter gets around the locker room. There's no way. I think he's setting himself up for a good job, whatever's next, for sure. Uh, okay, yeah, here, uh, but here's uh, my I don't question. know about that is because. That, uh, well, my question guys, with there's that no is way. also no, but it's it's like with the public outcry of support for yeah. him is yeah. the damage already done how do you how do you I go back a to a thousand well, okay this is what I want to know those thousand people that signed that petition how many of them are big-time donors writing checks to the school sure that's the people that have okay. the power here. so I, I, I'll, I'll here here's what, what I'll say if he goes on to beat Cal Mm -hmm. If they go Which on to win, they're probably their best shot at a win. Exactly. If they go on to be competitive for the rest of the the remaining games, it's going to be pretty hard to you know uh, not give him at yeah, least some. You gotta. Something. I mean, because at the end of the day, this is Corvallis. Yeah. This is Oregon State. This isn't like a big program like a Florida State. This isn't like a, you know Florida. Alabama okay. or Florida okay. or Nebraska. So I mean, it'll be really hard, especially in a tight knit community, for people that like him. For you yeah. to just be out, like, okay, you're out of here. Like, it, that's going to be really hard for them to do. Yeah. All right, later in the show. That's new. Yeah. Much doesn't necessarily know the more to come on the coaching search, including Jim McElwain, relieved of his duties at Florida this week. What's the chance we could see him in Corvallis? And after the break, Mike Parker weighing in on the impressive performance of the defense. On the left side, they're going to give it to Weddington. And that was read beautifully. The tackle by Oregon State, no gain. It is fourth down. When you show an athlete that if you do things the right way, 
these are the results. 20, Chris throws Arcega white side, and he fumbles somehow with one hand. I think he picked the ball up. And that was Landry Payne textbook right there. It is better than any kind of feeling that you can kind of manufacture that's not natural, right? It's a natural high that you get on the field when you know the details of your assignment, when you have thoroughly studied your opponent. Well, time to welcome in Mike Parker from Corvallis on our special Halloween edition of Talkin' Beavers. Mike, I, I see you have the black and orange, so we'll let you go with no costume today. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I really had to dig deep for some orange and black in my wardrobe. <laughs> now, Mike, uh, a great defensive performance by the Beavers uh, on Saturday, on Thursday, uh, including safety Landry Payne. And I, I think I'm probably not alone in saying, uh, you know, where did he come from? Because he had, you know, incredibly impressive performance. I don't think a lot of people even knew who he was before that game. No, he played a great football game. It's unfortunate, and I hate to even say this, but with you, and you look very nice decked out in your MASH gear. Unfortunately, we don't have a Robert Altman Festival, which would include MASH, by the way. I would like <laughs> that. But unfortunately for Landry Payne, coming off a game that did seem to come out of nowhere, Amanda, he too joins that MASH unit of secondary players that have been out. He's not going to be able to play against Cal and build on what was a, a sensational performance in all respects. He was flying around aggressively. He was a junior college All-American. He and his brother, Wesley, went to the same high school, to two different junior colleges together, and Wesley's had some big moments. Landry had only had five career tackles coming into this game, his whole career, going back to last year where he only played two games, and he gets 10 tackles and was a force on defense. So the Beavers will really miss him, but it's a great story to see Landry get an opportunity. And as Coach Hall said, be prepared for the opportunity by being a diligent student of the game. I mean, this secondary uh, has struggled with so many injuries this season. Of course, Coach Hall moving from DBs to the interim head coaching role. How involved is he still with the DBs? Well, that's a good question, and in fact, a question that I was curious enough about to ask him this week at his press availability, and here's what he had to say about that. I am in those rooms, but understand this. I am the, I'm in those rooms, and I will say this. Coach Rushing and Coach Cookus are doing a great job. I will take no credit for the job that they've done but I'm sitting in those rooms and um, I'm pleased. The thing that I like about that too, is he mentions Jake Cookus. Jake was a great safety. In fact, had the three interceptions in the memorable Civil War. So right now, it's all of the coaches coming together and you heard Corey be deferential towards John Rushing, the safeties coach. Omar Hicks Onu gave a great deal of credit to Coach Rushing for Omar being able to make a pick of Keller Christ. Jake played the position superbly when he came out of Roseburg and played at Oregon State. So Coach Hall is giving credit to others, but he also reminds us he's in those rooms and his influence is really being felt in that secondary. Overall, what did you make of the defense's effort? It was just it's so encouraging, the last two games, in fact, to be able to hold Pac-12 offenses to the kind of numbers the Beavers have after, really, quite honestly, a very disappointing performance on defense up to this point. They held Colorado to 386 yards, and to hold any offense, but Stanford with its big physical run game, yeah, I know Bryce Love didn't play, but they still have the great athletes on the offensive line. They have other good running backs, receivers, a quarterback, a veteran quarterback. They held that group to 222 yards of total offense. That's an unheard of number in this era. And so I, I just love the way the defense is playing with passion and with understanding. They're playing with aggression. They're playing fast and loose. But you can see that guys are assignment sound. And I think, again, that's a function of Corey Hall and those defensive coaches getting the guys on the same page. All right, thanks so much, Mike. We'll see you on Friday. 
In our Les Schwab Quick Fix, a look at how the defense performed versus Stanford as opposed to the rest of the season. You can see all those numbers basically cut in half. 15 points for Stanford, they kept him to. Uh, they were an averaging 40 points. Opponents were averaging 40 points against them. The total yards in half, they limited them to 222 yards. Of course, you didn't have Bryce Love. 81 also, rushing yards. Okay, not just did they not have Bryce Love, but Stanford is like super vanilla on offense. Yeah. And it still is impressive. No, though, it right? is. No, it is. I think because of how physical Stanford is, it's impressive. Like they beat people up at the line of scrimmage, but like they're just like boring. Like they just did the same thing over and over and over and over and over. Like, again. like, like throwing the ball on the goal line. Right. <laughs> <Same> <laughs> that, was yeah. that was amazing. Yeah. We're, yeah. We're going to make this work. We're going to make this work. <laughs> you know, and on, I don't remember if it was on the fourth down catch or on the, the touchdown that won it. David Shaw was asked about it after the game, and he said that in the, I think it was the San Diego State loss, they ran that play. It didn't work, and they watched it with Chris, and they said, you know, you're going to get, we're going to run run this again you're going to get another opportunity so to their credit but look to me the bigger thing is like they stepped in front of you know like I said four should have been picks they can do yeah. that again yeah what I think is what I think is interesting too is that it wasn't that long ago we were sitting here calling for Kevin Clue oh and I know how has he reinvigorated this position group okay so they have been better since like SC is the game to me that made yeah. that we saw a mm -hmm. huge improvement right and Gary Anderson had been much more involved in the defense than he was still the coach then so you know Got to give him a little credit. He yeah. quit on the team. Well, I also think that uh, Coach Hall has given a lot of his assistant coaches the freedom to yes. Do, yes. be more creative. Amen. That, you know, yeah. to do more things. That, and uh, they were hired for a reason. They were hired because of their creativity and their ability to connect with the players and put them in the right positions. And we're finally starting to see these guys be in the right position and start making yeah. plays. Paul said, too, well, this said. week that, you know, you can tell that players know what they're doing now. Yeah, because they're playing faster. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. All right, still to come, the offensive matchup showdown for the week between Steven Jackson and Steve Corey will unveil the winner. And is Ryan Nall the best running back in the Pac-12? Even over Heisman contender Bryce Love? Will one Pac-12 coach think so? In their best drive of the season. He's averaging eight yards of carry here tonight. The Fred Luena play, we practiced it. It was, it was funny, we practiced it when we ran it in practice. It, it, it was successful the, the same manner as it was in the game. It, it's, it's amazing. And um, at first, I think we did it with Blake Brandale. And yeah, that did not, that wasn't pretty. <laughs> eight yards of carry here tonight. Garrettson's going to throw it back. That's an offensive tackle who catches and will be shoved out of bounds at about the five yard line. Fred Laoina. <laughs> I wish I did call that one. I would look like a genius. I love that play. <laughs> Fred Luena, and I, you, I love how he just kind of like dips the shoulder. Yeah. Yeah. Like, I, I wish he, I I wish he stayed in bounce, though. Yeah, stay in bounce. Over. But I will give credit. That's good uh, hit bend right there for a big guy to go right. down for the ball. I like that. Yeah. <laughs> um, the thing that I love that Hall said, you don't see this, but um, Hall said, you know, we're in the entertainment business, and didn't you find that entertaining? Yeah. <laughs> Amazing. Wow, that was fun, man. We're, and that's what the bye week does. You pull out the tricks, right? You, you dip the shoulder right here. Dip the shoulder. And, and I think that goes back to the having fun. Yeah passionate like yep. yeah it's you know funny and we're all laughing about it and it worked but it also is like this is the type of energy that's around hall yeah yeah, yeah. All right, well, Michael Eicha, always known for his outlandish takes each and every week, but Beavers <laughs> fans might find, take a the liking pirate. to this one in particular. Take a listen to what he said this week. The Pirate. Uh, I actually think that Phil at Oregon State's the best one in the conference. First of all, he's big. Second of all, he's faster than you think. Third of all, <clears throat> he's, he's, he's very elusive. Even I mean, you got this big chunk of elusive out there. And then the other thing... Uh, <clears throat> the guy catches the ball really well. The guy blocks pretty good. Could block better because he's a huge guy. Um, the thing is, is everybody in the stadium knows that he's going to get the ball. I mean, they, you know, there's no mystery who's getting the ball there at Oregon State. In our podcast, Business Class Built for Service, a look at the guy's numbers. Oh, Ryan Hall. Hey. I love it. Yeah, that's yeah, yeah, yeah. The entire time he talks. Is, is, he, is he serious? Like, I, like, like, he was dead serious. No, he was definitely serious. It's like a yeah. three-minute answer. Okay, can, can I get this one first? I would I, love I, to, yeah, as, as the pirate, as the pirate. <laughs> <laughs> as the person who, I mean, okay, here, here's my thing. 
is that, you know, he made the comment, like, you know, that no, I was getting the ball, right? Well, I could say that so does with Stanford. You know Bryce yeah, Love is Bryce getting Love the ball. Getting the ball. Right. You also know with Colorado that Philip Lindsay is getting the ball. And look, and look what they have done. And that's no, and that's not a knock against no. I'm just saying yeah. that these running backs, everyone knows that they're getting the ball. And uh, not only are they successful, but they're blowing it up. Yeah. You know, Bryce Love is like, uh, he's insane right now. And yards of carry. And yards of carry. Yeah. For me, I can't really take Leach serious when he talks about a running back because they don't really run the ball. That's a good yeah. point. So, that is a very yeah. good point. I'm not buying I mean, that one, but I do like Nall a lot. Yeah. And you had him at four last week. I did. Your running I did. back ranking. Yeah. So still stand by that. After you Leach's know. comment, yep. <laughs> Number four still. <laughs> I'm course. just putting pressure on him a little bit now. And uh, on you. see, but here's the thing: anyone that likes pirates and talks about them feverishly, <laughs> you can't really take all. I that think serious. there's a lot of guys yeah, that are not even pirate talk that would make me be like, <laughs> you can't take it. Beach is extremely intelligent. Yeah, he is. Yeah. That's the yeah. one thing that gets lost. Fascinating character. Well, of course, sadly, we can't talk about Ryan all without talking uh, about that fumble. Go uh, there. You know, I, I know. You know, football again—a game of many plays, but this certainly one turned the tide with 2:30 left to go. Fumbles the football. Uh, what did you guys see happen here? Uh, and Evanson, particularly, uh, you know, as a running back. What, um, you what know, you got two, two minutes and 35 seconds, or whatever it was. You know, you got to hold on to the ball. That's the only way these guys are going to create a turnover is by trying to strip it or pick it. But they're not going to throw the ball, so you know they're going to run the ball. So yeah. the thing is to strip the ball. So you got to know as a running back going into that situation high and tight. And then, you know, don't try to fight for the extra yards, right? Just if you're going to go down, go down. Next play. I, uh, the one thing I have to say though is that like he wasn't even hit that hard. No, it, uh, they, I mean, they went straight to the. It went. They ripped the ball. They went straight to it. They didn't even care about him. Yeah, they went straight for the ball. Just oh. Tom, Thomas Steiner having a great game, maybe his best game in a Beavers uniform. Probably his best game in a Beavers uniform. Sure. We're going to take a look at uh, a great play of his w through the eyes of our veteran. Well, Coach Hall. We'll just say Coach Hall. <laughs> Coach Hall. Yeah. All right. Coach so Hall, obviously, there. Yeah. Stanford defense is obviously focused on Ryan Nall for the pitch, and then obviously Tanner comes underneath. Good block by Noah, and then jumps in there. I love how he kept that balance, kind of looked like Superman in slow-mo if you are able to see the, the field goal uh, or the end zone angle. Um, but yeah, just a great run. You know, just, this was you know, like vintage this, it, Tyner. Yeah. This is what the, this is the Tyner everyone's been excited yeah. to see. All. I love this right here. Just keeps Our speed. Do you oh. feel like any changes yeah. should be made in how they're utilizing the back? Should Tyner start? Does it matter? No, Tyner should not start. No, I mean, look, Nall fumbled the ball, and I think it is concerning, as as these guys pointed out when we were all texting during the game, like, careless two weeks yeah. in a row, that's really disappointing. But what? But Nall has earned that right. spot, you yep. know, and does so much. Um, Tyner, as we've talked about, is a different back, can hurt you in more ways, he's a better receiver out of the backfield, all those things. So, you know, it's a great one-two punch. Yeah, yeah. All right, time now to hand our, our Wilson Motor Game Balls. And Jason, let's start with you. Yeah, I nice want... I've said it from the beginning. I think that the overall team defense um, gets my game ball just because of the way that they flew around. You know, they stopped their running attack. They also, you know, got a turnover um, in, in the passing game. They could have got four turnovers, but yeah, they played a phenomenal game. So I'm gonna go with uh, Jonathan Willis, man. Flying around, we finally got to see what he was all about. I remember Coach Bray recruiting this kid, and uh, you know, he finally got to see what Jonathan Smith or Willis was all about. Uh, and then I went with Tanner, the person we were just talking about. Like I said, this is what everyone's been excited about. You know, 5.8 yards per carry, that's a good number. That's not a Bryce Love number, but that's a number that will get people excited. <laughs> yeah. One more thing I want to say about Nall really quickly about him fumbling. Look, that stinks that yeah. he did it. But I think that a lot of times, like, Oregon State fans in particular struggle with fumbles, yeah. and you'll know this, because Quiz never fumbled the ball. <laughs> he literally Wild. had no Smell fumbles yeah. in three yeah. years at that's OSU. That's right, that's right. So then when people, when we see a running back fumble, everyone's like, wait, what's happening? Yeah. Well, especially under those circumstances, too. Yeah. yeah. I mean, dry, two yeah. minutes left. Yeah. Right. Yep. Hurts. All right, much more to come here on the show, including will the Beavers reach out to the recently fired Jim McElwain for their open position? That discussion after the break. Cal Memorial Stadium getting set for a Saturday showdown with the Beavers still to come on the show. A closer look at the Golden Bears and their success this season. Plus the playoff rankings just released this evening where the Pac-12 stands and who is moving on in our damn best bracket. But back here in the Pac-12 as we were talking about Corey Hall turning some heads. We've been discussing whether or not he's a legitimate coaching candidate for this opening at Oregon State. But an interesting name tossed into the mix this week. Jim McElwain of Florida. Uh, do you feel like he's a good fit? Obviously, he has some West Coast ties no. from Montana. Oh, 
No, here's okay. why. Across okay. the board. You've got to right. be able to score in this conference, and Florida had a not good offense in the time he was there. Their defense was legit, but you have to be able to develop quarterbacks. That's Oregon State's biggest problem right now, and that's not a knock on Luton or Garrettson. It's just they, they haven't had a string of quarterbacks. So, like you said, you know, he's from Colorado State. He's got some West Coast ties, but I think this would be a backward step. Yeah, uh, not a great fit in my eyes, but... Um, yeah. I don't know. Does he even get a, a, even even a bite? Even a phone? of course oh. he will. He's an SEC co head coach. Yeah, but or was. I have, a, I have a hard time hiring someone who was you know fired in the middle of the yeah. season. Yeah, you know I what I'm like saying? I, just, and, I, I feel know. like that's coaching. I feel like no, but part of him being fired was because he made some comments about how his family had received death threats and then when the school investigated it they couldn't substantiate anything and there are rumors now that maybe he made it up oh come on and that's like you don't want to go down that path yeah drama Sorry. and we don't want to deal with that Oregon State uh, right. we've got enough drama this season yeah. <laughs> yeah. Few years. We had enough. that is very true well despite all these ups and downs in Corvallis this season the Beavers actually managed to pull in three recruits uh, this weekend, all three-star guys, Keyshawn Dawkins out of West Lynn, Craig Francois out of LA Cathedral, and Isaiah Tafago of Hawaii. That is our best foot forward, brought to you by the Good Feet Store. And here's Corey Hall on the challenges of recruiting in uncertain times. I'm reassuring recruits that your a commitment in Oregon State is a commitment to a university. It's a commitment to a brotherhood. It's a commitment to a different kind of fraternity. And there's something, no matter what happens, um, there's something special going on here at Oregon State. And there's no one who can tell me anything different. Okay, so Coach Hall talked on it. But I want to know for you guys, during your recruiting process, would your parents have let you come to a school that you don't know what's Such going on? Such a good question. You're sending yeah. your 18 year olds uh, yeah. off to, this is their, their future. You're I, I actually went through something exactly the same. I had Coach, uh, Coach Erickson recruited me, and two weeks after I committed, he left for the 49ers job, and Riley came in. So obviously, my, my ties were with Oregon State. Uh, not so much uh, Erickson at the time because I knew the football team was great. You know, we had Steven Jackson, Derek Anderson, uh, James Newsom, Mike Hass, the list can go on. Um, but we just had quality players I knew that would be all right. See, I had a different experience. I was being recruited by Arizona Wildcats, and that coaching staff ended up getting fired. And my relationship was really with, with one of the uh, defensive line coaches, and he left. So I then decided to look elsewhere. Um, and Oregon State was, you know, so... Um, for me, I'd say no, like, uh, you know, because part of that package to me is, you know, the commitment and the relationship that you build with the coach itself. Um, so it's, it's, it's an interesting situation. So one thing that's really important to keep in mind is there's going to be an early signing day this year. You're going to be able to sign kids in December, so that's going to be really important to get a coach in. So what I wondered with, because Ev basically answered this, but Jason, when you, because you were an Erickson kid and then wound up yeah. playing under Riley, did you think about going somewhere else? Um, not really. I mean, because I already had the relationship, like, with my teammates and, you know, the staff there. Um, so, because th even though Erickson left, there was a little bit of a holdover from some of the coaches. Gotcha. So, so I still had that relationship and connection with them. So I, I never did. So, um, no. You recruit to a school. That's yeah. what coaches will tell you. Yeah. yeah. I also like uh, those recruits. It was last week or two that we've had those committed. Those guys committed. Yes. So that yep. just shows you how... Uh, People respect Coach Hall out there. Absolutely. Those guys are yeah. to, uh, to commit to Coach Hall, not yeah. knowing he's going to be around next sure. year. Yeah. That's impressive. And let's not forget that part of that recruiting process is them uh, meeting and talking to the players. Yeah. I mean, the players that are currently right there, uh, currently there, That's are true. part of that recruiting and part oh, of the yeah. process. So Big time. The fact that they're energized they're and, and really all about it, that, that speaks volumes. Mm -hmm. All right, still to come, we're unveiling the winner of this week's Damn Best Bracket. Who's moving on, Steven Jackson or Steve Corey? And up next, has the Pac-12 scheduled themselves out of the college football playoff? Let's discuss. Time now for our standard TV and appliance with headlines with our veteran reporter, Lindsay Schnell of USA Today. Uh, and Lindsay, we haven't heard from Jake Luton in a while, but now maybe some news about him, right? Indeed. So Sunday night, Jake Luton tweets out that he was going to the doctor on Monday and was praying and hopeful for good news. It seems that this tweet and this news of him even going to the doctor caught some people by surprise because Monday at his press conference, Corey Hall said he read that tweet and thought, what? 
<laughs> so, Luton goes to the doctor. He spoke with the media on Tuesday. First time, as you pointed out, that he's talked to everyone since September 16th when he fractured some vertebrae in his neck uh, after the Washington State, during the Washington State game. They cleared him to throw, so he threw Monday and Tuesday. No pads, no helmet, still no you know, official timetable for his return. So I am doubtful that we will see him in 2017, but crazier things have happened. Uh, the good news, Amanda, is that Luton said that even when he was laying in the hospital, he never thought about quitting football. This is the game he loves. So I think that people, everyone in Beaver Nation is gonna be happy to hear that. And I love that he said he had to watch the play almost immediately afterwards. He wanted to see what happened to right. him. His family thought he was crazy. They didn't know why he needed to see that right away, but I think that he just wanted to watch it to understand exactly Exactly what happened could he have done anything differently so good news that is progress at least all right second one national rankings big important national rankings out today okay if you are watching the show I am assuming that you are a college football fan and therefore that you were paying attention just a little bit ago when the college football playoff committee released its initial rankings now remember there's I think there's six of these before the the final ones come out where we know who's going to the playoff but here we go Georgia Alabama Notre Dame Clemson Oklahoma Ohio State is right behind Oklahoma remember the Sooners beat them opening weekend huge dramatic win Baker Mayfield you know trolled everyone which he's so good at but the troubling thing Amanda is there is Washington at number 12 now important to remember the playoff committee values good wins more than they do bad losses but right now Washington doesn't have a good win its non-conference schedule was underwhelming if it would play USC in the Pac-12 title game that would be good the Trojans look a lot better the last couple weeks but I think that the Pac-12 is going to be on the outside looking in when the playoff comes around and as we discussed with Nigel on Go Beavs on Friday uh, excuse me on Thursday from Research Stadium that means you're gonna lose out on a lot of money well, and, and any of those top four or five teams that you anticipate losing, does it even matter? I think the more important thing to keep an eye on is what are the bottom teams that could vault into the top? Again, going back to the good wins. So Ohio State just beat Penn State there. I think Penn State is number seven. They're right behind Ohio State. Ohio State still is going to play Michigan, and then presumably they're going to play Wisconsin in the Big Ten title game. That could, you know, big time send a message. I mean, when Ohio State won the inaugural college football playoff, it was after they thumped Wisconsin, coached then by Gary Anderson, in the Big Ten title game, sent a message, got into the playoff. So I think that Ohio State, provided they don't lose again, will be in the playoff. All right, and our third one is another team having some pretty strong success. Okay, just a couple weeks ago, we're standing up here and I'm saying how no one's winning at Oregon State, and then the volleyball team rips off a five-game winning streak that includes two wins over top 20 teams. They beat Utah on Friday. Utah was ranked number 12. They beat them 3-1. to one. Now they lost to Colorado then later that weekend, uh, also 3-1. to one. Now they got to go on the road. Look how excited they are there, Amanda. I would be excited also <laughs> if I were on a five-game winning streak. So the tough thing is now they got to go on the road to the Bay Area. Stanford is ranked number two in the nation. You know, the Pac-12 is historically the toughest volleyball conference in the country. It's just murderer's row in the Pac-12. So it's going to be tough at Stanford. The Cardinals swept Oregon State when they were in Corvallis earlier this season. But maybe a little confidence, you know, start another five-game winning streak. All right. Well, thank you so much, Lindsay. Much more to come here on the show, including one of the biggest challenges that Cal presents this weekend. But first, Steven Jackson, Steve Corey, a big time battle. We're going to reveal the winner coming up next. Well, plenty of Beavers coverage coming your way each and every week. Join us for Inside the Huddle Thursdays at 7.30 p.m. Go Beavs Friday nights at 9. And of course, talking Beavers every Wednesday at 7 p.m. And we are looking to crown the top performance in Oregon State football history in our damn best bracket throughout the season. Now for the offensive showdown of Steven Jackson and Steve Corey. And the winner is... Stop. Bum, 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 bum. Steven Jackson, 100%. It's hard, to, it's hard to compete with Steven Jackson. All right, for our defensive matchup this week, it is going to be Jess Lewis versus Anoke Brechterfield. We're going to be discussing who wins coming up on Friday. Make sure to hop on our Facebook page and vote. Facebook.com slash NBCS Northwest. And, of course, Beavers getting ready to play Cal. Uh, Cal adjusting to new life under a new head coach, Justin Wilcox. Here was, here's what his players had to say about the transition. Now Darnold takes a shot, and it's picked off. I, mean, I love that he's like a down-to-earth guy, man. Just like I said, I mean, you, you can go talk to him about anything, if you got any problems with anything. And then he's, he's just cool, man. You rarely see that, like, a guy just comes up to you every day, says what's up, sits down at the table for breakfast, and just shoots it with you, man. It's just, 
It's just amazing, man. The guy is really a special guy. He's a great coach. He brings the defensive mindset. We haven't had that in the past. And I mean, he's just definitely building on our culture and just adding to our tools that we've already had and just educating us on football. And I mean, he's been a great guy. He's brought us in. We welcome him with open arms and he's been cool since day one. We're in our Toyota tune-up. We're taking a closer look at the California Golden Bears and Justin Wilcox. Again, they've had a little bit of a setback uh, losing the last st three straight games, but they certainly have exceeded expectations to start. Uh, what's your assessment about Cal? What is their strength? What's kind of the scariest thing about? So first of all, Wilcox did an incredible job when he hired yeah. people. He hired a lot of guys who had been head coaches, a lot of guys who have a lot more experience than him coaching. I think that shows that he doesn't have an ego. To me, the um, like most interesting thing about Wilcox, when as you think about Oregon State's going to have to hire, is yeah. just yeah. a couple years ago, Wilcox was like on the outs as USC's defensive coordinator. And I think sometimes yeah. in college football, we get really obsessed with, well, what did you just do last year? As yep. opposed to looking at over time. You know, he was a very good DC when he was at Boise State. And then I believe he went to Washington for a while, then at SC for a while, and then at Wisconsin last year. So that's the biggest thing to me. And he's someone that had a plan. You know, this is my thing with Corey Hall is, does he have a list of here's who I want to hire? Right. You know, whereas Wilcox did. But well, they've struggled but have been really impressive. Yeah, and, and one of the things like with being a coach is that uh, you have to look at the whole body, the f their full body of work, right? Um, I know you get judged and you get, you know, um, uh, I guess uh, asked about like how what have you done for me lately? You know, mm -hmm. last year. But with him, he's been a coach for a long time, right. and sometimes the changing of scenery really helps. And what he's done is that he's reinvigorated that Cal defense. I mean, they're yeah. flying they around. They play defense playing? now. Yeah, in I, mean, one year. I mean, it's amazing, you know. And and you could tell that you know how happy and how energized the, these kids are. So. And it's a roster that doesn't have a ton of talent on no. it. No. Yeah. Just wait till he gets his recruits in. I think Not, uh, yeah. they're going to be scared. As far as offense goes, they're 11th in total offense uh, in the Pac-12. Who do you watch for on offense? Who's who's going to be the major threat for this Beavers defense? Well, I think th their quarterback is, I really like him a lot. I mean, I still think he probably has one of the plays of the year when he flipped over for that touchdown. Yeah, you know? for sure. I mean, so, I mean, he, he's, he's dangerous to me. I mean, he, he spreads the ball around. He's efficient. Um, he does tend to, you know, uh, be a little, you know, uh, throw the, uh, some interceptions. Right. I think he has 11 interceptions yep. on the year. 15 but, uh, touchdowns to yeah, 15 interceptions. Touchdowns. So, you know, he, but he plays really within himself a lot of the times, so, too. So, I, I like him as, you know, the go-to guy. Bo Baldwin, the offensive coordinator at Cal, is a name being thrown around as a potential Oregon State head coach. I think he would be a great hire. Yeah, but if they're 11th in offense, do we really want to go that direction either? Uh, yeah, because they're an 11th in offense because they don't have a tight end on the roster. <laughs> <laughs> they, they had, like, no talent when they walked in there. You know what? Baldwin, Baldwin won a lot at Eastern Washington and can no, I know. recruit, uh, I know. Identi identify, recruit, and develop quarterbacks, which yeah. is what Oregon State needs. But here's the thing is that let's not forget that Cal was picked dead last Right, the yeah. and, and they went and, one know, at North Carolina. They beat Old Miss at they home. They beat Washington Wazoo. State. I mean, you know, so um, they've had some losses. Obviously, I mean, uh, they're on a, a two-game losing streak right now, but um, they've been they played everyone really tough. Yeah. You know, they haven't been blown out per se by anyone. So, right. which is speaks volumes. All right, more to come here on the show. But right now, we're heading over to the OSU Beaver Store. Hey Beaver Nation, I'm Melanie at the OSU Beaver Store here on campus. We play away this weekend, so you want to get your house all decked out and cheer on the bees. We've got these great old wine barrels that have been repurposed. You can even see the red wine on the back. Bottle openers, wine openers, posters that are bottle openers, and a really cool clock that was the top of the wine barrel and is perfect for you all. We've got all sorts of decor, blankets, and more. You'll find it all here at the OSU Beaver Store Fan Set. Okay, look at the most popular Halloween candy in every state, and I really don't believe these. I now, believe Oregon, it. I don't even know I what 100 it. grand is. Oregon is 100 I, grand. Apparently, everybody likes 100 and grand. And who likes Almond Joys? I've never ever had a hot. I was going to say who likes Almond Joys, but look I at this little, Almond this little uh, collection of wrappers yep, over here yep. with Captain Hook. That's right. The Florida, one was, me. the Florida one was dead on point because my dad, every baseball game, would give me a Snickers bar and a Gatorade every baseball game and so 
And then that's you real. ate it during that's the game. That's real. I would. I so played cool. outfield. You know, the ball didn't come <laughs> well, out. Well, are, are you going to do the same thing with Legend? Are you going to give him uh, Snickers? Uh, like, uh, that's, a good uh, that's a good question. Um, you should. Scott, he knows. Look, look no, at you now. No. Look at you now. <laughs> I, I just can't get over that there's not more Reese's. Like, maybe we're living I don't yeah. think that this is an accurate thing. Also, I don't I mean, think peanut M&Ms are up there anywhere. Ooh, that's oh. my favorite candy. That's true. I want to know what kind of candy, was this a question we asked uh, for our Blazer shows yesterday, what kind of candy would the beavers be? Right now? You yeah, right play. now. Oh. Um, no gonna... idea. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that... you got to give someone a heads up. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that, that, that's, okay. yeah. Why do other people uh, say about the Blazers? Man. Well, Dwight said they were cotton candy. Ooh, oh, ouch. I don't want to be. Forest. No. Oh. You know what? Uh, soft? <laughs> That's what I interpret it to mean. Marshmallow. All right. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, looking, looking at the, the rest of the Beaver schedules, I want to know, this team has been so close to breaking through. Where could they, they get a win out of here? All four. Oh, uh, I don't no, think I they're think bottling up. I, 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 they get yeah. Cal. Arizona's going to be a battle. They can get Arizona State and Oregon. Obviously, that's civil war. Yeah, there's not, so a, that's, there's that's, not a single one of those no. teams that they can't win. Yeah. I mean, they could come on crazy. The only one that really does uh, kind of strike me as kind of hard is the Arizona game, just because yeah, Khalil Tate. Yeah, Khalil Tate. Yeah, it yeah, it really scares me. Well, he might um, have a bad ankle, too, uh, just like I do that. think this. Um, I do think that they're going to beat someone they're not supposed to. You know, yeah. I, like that's been pretty clear to me the last two weeks. And maybe that'll be the Ducks because by the Civil War, Justin Herbert might be back. And if so, I would anticipate Oregon will be favored. Yeah. All right. What do they have to do to beat Cal this week? Continue playing the way that they've been playing. Yeah. You know, I mean, they're right there. They, it's just one or two plays that they're missing. And then if they make those plays this yeah. game, they yeah, win. Yeah, win the turnover I think battle. They, yeah, they match up very uh, They match up very well. I think, uh, you know, skill-wise, I think it's, it's, it's even on both sides. Yeah. All right. Well, thank you so much for joining us on this great Halloween evening. We hope you have a great night. We'll see you back here for Go Beeves on Friday night.